a Fisher coach honored new football rules and the American response to an Iranian missile test. All that and more, Nets on Fisher News. Welcome to Fisher News. I'm Caitlin Murphy. And I'm Julian Winters. On Friday, February 3rd, here at St. John Fisher College, two political scientists will be discussing the recent presidential election, along with other various topics. This event is titled February 1st Lecture, and it will be taking place in the Clary Family Auditorium in Kearney Hall. First, there will be a mass service at 9 a.m., and following that, at 10 a.m., the main event will begin. The purpose of this event is to draw those individuals interested in learning about the several topics that will be discussed. For more information, please call Libby Pinty at 585-385-7350 or email her at epinty at stjohnfisher.edu. One of St. John Fisher's football coaches was recently honored with an award. Assistant Coach Gary Mervis was given the 2016 Glioblastoma Multiform Heroes Award by the Cure Media Group. The national award recognizes individuals who have made a significant difference in the lives of patients diagnosed with glioblastoma, a disease in which a malignant tumor affects the brain or spine. Mervis is the chairman and founder of Camp Good Days and Special Times and has been coaching for Fisher football for 27 years. Throughout this month at St. John Fisher College, the Office of Multicultural Affairs and Diversity Programs will be collecting specific food items for the local Rochester community who are in need. This food drive is only for this month, so please donate what you can during the time period. There will be donation boxes located at various locations on campus. Once all the donations are received, they will be taken to St. Mary's Place. Please do not hesitate in participating in this great food drive. Over the winter break, Fisher appointed the new Dean of Wegmans School of Pharmacy. After an extensive national search, the college chose Dr. Christine Burney as the new Dean, a decision that was made effectively. Previously, Burney had served as the student's interim Dean following the passing of the founding Dean, Dr. Scott Swigert. At St. John Fisher College, there is a new club that will be introduced to students soon. The partnership between the college and an organization called the National Alliance of Mental Illness has been sealed. The National Alliance of Mental Illness, also known as NAMI, attempts to bring awareness to those about mental illness and wants to help those who have been or are currently affected by mental illness. NAMI is new on campus and there are seven executive board directors. They will be hosting an event titled Our Own Voice on Tuesday, February 7th, along with special guest speakers who will be sharing their personal experiences of living with mental illness. This event will be located at Basel 135 during free period. Please support this new club. The 35th annual Teddy Dance for Love is set to kick off in a few weeks. This year, the 24-hour dance marathon will take place on February 17th at 8 p.m. and in February 18th at the same time. Those looking to donate hair to be made into wigs for those affected by cancer may sign up to donate at least 8 inches on February 18th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Haircuts are free and appointments can be made by emailing teddy at sjfc.edu. Walk-ins will also be welcome. We'll be right back with city and state news after this break. We'd do anything for kids. Yet one in five children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back to Fisher News. One person has been arrested in connection with damaging property inside a Walmart. According to Gates Police, 16-year-old Adioson Hughes allegedly set a box of furniture on fire inside of a Walmart on January 19th. Police say he was arrested for arson in the fifth degree and criminal mischief in the fourth degree. A new law in the state of New York could affect youth athletes who play football. 
The proposed law will prohibit children who are 13 and younger from playing in organized tackle football leagues. The main reason why this law is being proposed is because of the danger that the game of football brings to those who play the sport. The new proposed law will either receive love or hate from the families that are being affected by this new change. On the pro side, people will view it as a great law because it protects the youth athletes' health. But on the other hand, people may not like this law because football is being taken away from kids who love the sport. The law has been introduced multiple times, but will this be the first time it receives a vote? Rochester police say a husband and wife are dead after a murder-suicide in a Greece home on Tuesday, January 31st. According to police, the incident happened on Mount Reed Boulevard near Stone Road. Officers were called when the woman did not come to work at a nursing home across the street. Police did a welfare check and found two people dead inside the home with gunshot wounds. A handgun was found in the home at the scene. According to police, the couple, George and Peggy St. George, were in their 70s and neighbors say Peggy had recently filed for divorce. The Muslim community in Rochester have been shaken by the daily attack that occurred in Quebec City Sunday night. Although nothing has occurred, here fortunately the conversation is beginning to spark about what happens if something occurs in Rochester. Savir Fazili, the president of the Islamic Center of Rochester, visited the Good Day Rochester on Monday morning to answer questions. The security of local mosques in Rochester was the main topic discussed while he was on television. He is open to all questions to create dialogue instead of misunderstanding. New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman announced on Tuesday, January 31st, that he has filed a lawsuit against Charter Communications, alleging that the cable and internet provider failed to deliver on promised internet speeds and reliability. The lawsuit seeks compensation for customers. Charter subsidiary Spectrum was previously known as Time Warner Cable. The Rochester City School District wants their security officers to wear body cameras in order to provide safety for the school. They are currently working with the Rochester Police Department to provide this plan for their school. As their partnership is currently in work, it seems as though body cameras won't be added to a security officer's uniform until the next new school year. The main roadblock may be protecting the student and the staff members to ensure their rights are not violated. Stay tuned for national and global news. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director here, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. And to see you makes me proud. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Fisher News. From now on, it's just Tesla. After 13 years, Tesla Motors Incorporated is shortened its name. The move comes as the company diversifies its business beyond just selling electric cars. Tesla has built a massive Jigga factory in Nevada to produce lithium ion batteries and sells a battery system that can power an entire home. CEO Elon Musk has talked about plans to build heavy duty trucks and high passenger density urban transport. In a blog post last year, Musk said Tulsa's mission isn't just to build cars. President Trump introducing his pick for the Supreme Court, Colorado appellate judge Neil Gorsuch, in a big primetime event from the East Wing. Republicans applauding the 49-year-old conservative. Democrats vowing to challenge Gorsuch like they've challenged Trump cabinet picks. Calling the president's choice hostile, Jeff Zeleny reports. Here they come. Here they come. In a primetime reveal, President Trump unveiling Judge Neil Gorsuch as his nominee to the Supreme Court. I only hope that both Democrats and Republicans 
can come together for once for the good of the country. As this process now moves to the Senate, I look forward with speaking with members from both sides of the aisle. Setting up a battle between Senate Republicans. I think it was an absolute home run. And Democrats who are vowing a confirmation fight after President Obama's nominee to fill the seat of the late Justice Antonin Scalia was blocked for 10 months. If I conclude that he is out of the mainstream on issues like privacy rights, including women's health care and Roe v. Wade, or worker and consumer protection, I will use every tool at my disposal to block his nomination. For the White House, it's a chance to turn the spotlight from the growing backlash over the president's executive order on immigration and refugees. The fallout continuing with more than 900 State Department diplomats signing a memo of dissent against the travel ban. House Speaker Paul Ryan admitting the rollout was unusually rough. Regrettably, the rollout was confusing, um, but on a go forward basis, I'm confident that Secretary Kelly um, is going to make sure that this is done correctly. Ryan speaking about Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly, who is in charge of implementing the action. An action he defended despite chaotic scenes and flip-flopping on green card holders. We knew it was coming. It wasn't a surprise it was coming. Uh, and then we implemented it. Meantime, the White House is trying to rebrand the order. That is by nature not a ban. I understand your point. It is extreme the president Yet ban is exactly how the president and his press secretary, Sean Spicer, described the action. We're going to have a very, very strict ban. It's a 90-day ban. The ban deals with seven countries. Pressed on the point, Spicer provided no clarity, instead taking aim at a familiar target. No, I'm not confused. I think that the words that are being used to describe it are derived from what the media is calling this. Despite legal challenges and protests, the administration is signaling it has no plans to change the order. Three high-ranking Republican senators saying they were told the White House will not be rewriting its controversial travel ban. A kid stumbles upon a stolen bag of money. An ailing woman gets a nationwide act of kindness. Coming up in today's Take a Look at This. Kids always imagine what they would do if they found a big bag of money. Well, one South Carolina kid found out. Seven-year-old Griffin Steele and his dad had stopped at a gas station when Griffin found a $20 bill. But that's not all. I had some wrapping from my Gatorade bottle, so I went, so I went to the trash can and I threw it in and there was tons of money with red dye on it. Griffin's dad called the police and found out they were looking for a suspect in a bank robbery that had occurred just hours before. Police believe the money, which was covered in red security dye, was the bank's stolen cash. The cops are still investigating, but thanks to this junior detective, they now have another piece hey. of the puzzle. A Colorado woman fighting for her life is receiving an amazing show of support from people she doesn't even know. Shirley O'Keefe suffers from a bad heart and failing kidneys. She received a terminal prognosis last year and vowed to make it to Christmas, and then New Year's, and now. So I told my doctor, if I make it until Valentine's Day, you gotta give me a Valentine. Shirley's niece posted her story on Facebook, and now she is receiving Valentine's cards from all over the country. Letters of love and encouragement for a fighter who refuses to give up hope. I'm gonna make it to Easter. And Easter, I'm going to make it to Mother's Day. I'm going to live every day. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. A small Ohio town is playing an important role for Super Bowl 51 this weekend. That's because the town is home to the factory that makes the football used in the big game. And it's celebrating that role by hosting a football festival Saturday night. Dan Cummins reports. Ada, Ohio is a sleepy town of 5,800 and known for two things. Ohio Northern University going back to 1871. And it's where Wilson Sporting Goods has made the NFL football since 1955 and every one of 51 Super Bowl since and counting. Saturday night, they're planning a Wilson football festival downtown, hoping to draw families to celebrate the company that's provided careers to so many. They'll have a football movie showing Friday Night Lights. At Ohio Northern, a gathering to show and talk about your favorite Super Bowl commercials. There will be music and family entertainment. And you know how on New Year's Eve they drop a walleye in Port Clinton? Well, on Super Bowl Eve, Ada's is going to drop a Wilson football. Not this football, that football. Well, I think we're the second largest uh, employer in Ada behind Ohio Northern. And the people obviously are all within 15, 20 miles of here. 
So they know the community, they, they cash their checks here, they spend their money here, and uh, this is just a sense of pride for both parties. We're the only place in the United States that a professional ball is made. All the other balls for professional sports are made offshore. So this is really about small town, it's about Main Street, it's about made in America. And the countdown to Super Bowl Sunday continues. Dan Cummins, WTOL 11. The new U.S. ambassador to the United Nations is slamming Iran for conducting a ballistic missile test on Sunday. A U.S. defense official says the missile test failed and posed no threat to the U.S. or its allies in the region. So was this a violation of the nuclear arms deal? CNN Fred Plegent has more. Now, the Iranians, of course, have a very different take on all of this. They say that the ballistic missile test did not violate the nuclear agreement between the United States, Iran, and several other world powers, and also none of the other UN resolutions that are cur currently levied on the Iranians. They say that their ballistic missile program is solely for defensive purposes and that the ballistic missiles that have been tested, and certainly one that was tested this weekend, are not capable of carrying any nuclear warheads. They say that no one has the right to tell the Iranians when they're allowed to test any of these weapons, and that, once again, these weapons are solely for the defense of Iran. Again, the U.S., of course, taking a very different view on that. Uh, Nikki Haley, the new ambassador of the Trump administration to the United Nations, saying that the U.S. will continue to be vigilant and will continue to speak out against any further uh, ballistic missile tests that the Iranians may undertake. The United States is not naive. We are not going to stand by. You will see us call them out as we said we would, and you're also going to see us act accordingly. We are committed to making sure that they understand this is not anything we will ever accept. For Plykin, London. Former Vice President Joe Biden and his wife have launched a namesake foundation. The Biden Foundation will focus on several issues, among them ending violence against women, strengthening the middle class, and protecting children. The former vice president says the foundation will also continue his so-called cancer moonshot. The initiative approved by Congress last year is a personal crusade for Biden, whose son, Beau, died after a long battle with brain cancer. The Biden Foundation will be staffed by former Biden aides and funded by tax-free donations. And that's all the time we have for today. For this and other Cardinal Television programs, please check out Time Warner Cable Channel 12. Also be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Cardinal Television Fisher. I'm Julian Winters. And I'm Caitlin Murphy.